So this week we're going to do a brake job on the Countryman. We're going to do the front and the rear, so we're going to split it up into two weeks. So we're going to start with the fronts first. Shouldn't need any special tools. Stay tuned because you might need a special tool that you might not have for the rears. But let's go ahead and pull this in the garage, get started with the front brake job. So this week's video is brought to you by Outmotoring.com. When I needed to buy all these parts for this Countryman to replace its brakes, I went to Outmotoring.com and bought them all there. I've been shopping there for almost 10 years now. They have a great selection of parts and super fast shipping here in the U.S. So go check them out and use MVL5 at checkout to save 5% off your total order. Check them out at outmotoring.com. As you can see here, we got a little bit of everything, so the car's gonna get everything. But hopefully this video is useful for you if you're going to just do maybe the pads or the rotors. So yeah, hopefully you can just watch the piece that's important to you. But we're gonna do everything. Um, we're probably gonna split it into two videos. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with this and see where we get and uh, take you along for this journey. Let's go. Okay, so we'll jack up the car really quick. I'm not gonna show you that. Then we'll pop off the uh, lug nuts and take the wheel off. The next thing we'll do is loosen up the uh, rotor bolt. So we're going to put the lug nuts back in to use that as leverage so that we can um, rotate that rotor bolt without the rotor rotating on us. So it'll make sense when you go to try it yourself. So the next step in our process is to loosen up that brake line as well. We want to do that while that caliper is still hanging there and not spinning freely. Then we'll remove the two bolts that are holding the caliper back onto the hanger. Once we get those out of the way, we can slide that caliper off. And we'll just hang this caliper up out of the way for now. Uh, if you're gonna reuse your caliper, this is a great way to do it, just a zip tie, so you're not putting stress on that brake cable. But we're gonna replace that caliper. So don't forget to remove the brake pad wear sensor. It looks like this wire going in through the caliper. So next, we we'll remove the hanger, and we're gonna take the pads out with it, and we'll reinstall the pads in, in this existing hanger before we put it back on. It makes our life a little bit easier. And then uh, we'll take the rotor off. So next we'll pop off the two bolts holding the hanger on to the hub and we'll be able to then remove that whole assembly and remove the brake pads and replace those. So we're gonna pop these slides out. We're not replacing the hanger. So we take the slides out and just re-grease them, give them a little bit more life uh, until we replace those down the road. Now we'll remove the old mounting clips out of the hanger that hold the brake pads and we'll clean that area up a little bit very lightly with a light wire brush. Now that that's cleaned out, we'll put in the new mounting clips that to kind of snap into place where the existing ones went. And once we have those in there, we're going to apply just a very light amount of grease that's gonna allow those brake pads to slide in there nicely. So the mounting clips are now in the old hanger. We're ready to put these new Techstar brake pads into these new mounting clips. That little bit of grease that we put in there helps us uh, slide them in really nice and easy. Once we have them in the hanger fully, we're gonna set those aside and move on to replacing the rotor next. Okay, now it's time to remove that old rotor. We'll finish pulling out that bolt, pull off the rotors, and we'll be nice to our future self or the future owner of this car and put a little bit of uh, never seize on the hub for the new rotor so it doesn't get uh, seized up on there. Now we'll clean the new brake rotors with some brake clean on both sides to make sure there's no oil residue left on there from shipping. Get them nice and clean, and we're gonna put them back on the hub where the old ones were. We'll use that old rotor bolt to reinstall this new rotor, put a little bit of never seize on that bolt as well so it comes out easier in the future. We can take the old hanger with the new brake pads and clips and put it back onto the hub. We're going to take our bolts and put them in the back. Again, a little bit of never seize on there so that they come off easier in the future. So let's take a look at what we got so far. We've got the new rotor on, we have the new pads in the old hanger. Yeah, we'll replace the hanger in the future. And we have the two hanger bolts uh, holding the hanger back on. One here and one right up there. So we're gonna tighten those up and then we can move on to the new caliper. Torque specs for the uh, hanger to the hub is 81 foot pounds and the caliper to the hanger is 22 pounds. So make sure you to torque those accordingly. So next we're gonna remove the old caliper and to do that we're gonna remove the brake line. But if you were gonna keep your existing caliper you need to make sure you push that piston back in. So our new calipers do have a bleed port right on them, so we don't need to grab the ones off the old ones. But if yours don't have that bleed port, you're gonna have to grab it off of the existing uh, caliper. So we got the new one here ready to go. 
Let's go ahead and reinstall that brake cable. So we'll tighten up the brake line, not brake cable, back onto these brand new calipers. Looks so nice and shiny. And we're gonna put a little bit of grease on just the back of the pads. That'll prevent a little bit of squeak from happening when uh, you apply those brakes. Don't go too crazy. We did wipe this down a little bit after we did that. Okay, now we uh, have everything greased up. The back of the pads are greased. The caliper is ready to be installed back on the hanger. Again, remember to torque this down to 22 foot pounds of torque. No idea what that is in Newton. <laughs> So we'll slide this caliber back on. It should go on fairly nicely, especially with everything all creased up. We'll take the new bolts provided with the new calipers and we'll put them into the back of the hanger slides to mount this sliding caliper. Next step, we got the caliper installed, the hangers back on, everything's good to go. We're gonna bleed these brakes. So to breed the brakes, we need to get to that master cylinder, which is not anywhere in this engine bay. It's tucked up behind that secret trap door up there. So we'll pop the cap on that commence the bleeding. So if you don't know already, bleeding brakes is really a two-man job. One person is going to sit inside and pump the brakes. The other is going to be at the caliper, opening and closing the bleed valve to let any air bubbles out. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Adam's going to be at the caliper, opening, closing, oops, sorry, <laughs> opening and closing that. I'm going to pump those brakes. Now this is not gonna be a comprehensive video on how to bleed brakes, uh, but the basic concept is that you're gonna have one person pump the brake several times, hold their foot on the brake pedal, and the other person will open up the bleed valve to let air bubbles out. You'll repeat this several times until there's no longer air bubbles. Once that's done and you have a good brake pedal feel, you're gonna put the wheel back on and take it for a test drive. So yeah, that's it. Uh, the car works, brakes are fine on the front, so come back next week. We're gonna attempt the rears. We're gonna need a special socket for that but I uh, have it, so we should be ready to go. So leave any questions or comments you have down below. I'll try and answer them. And uh, as always, when you see other minis out there, don't forget to wave. I'll catch you all in the next one.